Ever had a conversation with a narcissist and felt drained afterwards? It's a common experience and one that can leave you feeling frustrated, unheard, and emotionally depleted. But it doesn't have to be this way. Today we're going to delve into the art of navigating these challenging dialogues, starting with the all-important topic of setting boundaries. Boundaries, you see, are your first line of defense. They're the invisible line that separates what's okay from what's not okay for you. Before you even engage in a conversation with a narcissist, it's crucial to decide what you're willing to discuss and what's off limits. It's about knowing your limits, respecting your needs, and asserting them calmly and clearly. Now how do you communicate these boundaries? It's simple. Be direct, be firm, but also be respectful. You could say something like, I'd prefer if we didn't discuss my personal life, or I think it's best if we focus on the task at hand. This is not about shutting down the conversation, but rather steering it away from potentially manipulative territory. During the conversation, there might be times when the narcissist tries to cross these boundaries. They might veer off topic or try to manipulate the conversation for their benefit. In these moments, it's important to hold your ground. Politely but firmly redirect the conversation back to the agreed upon topics. You could say, I'm not comfortable discussing that right now, or let's stay focused on the topic at hand. Remember, setting boundaries is not about being confrontational or rigid. It's about creating a space for healthy, respectful communication. It's about standing up for your needs and ensuring that the conversation remains productive and balanced. And let's not forget, it's a two-way street. Just as you have the right to set your boundaries, the narcissist has the right to set theirs. It's about finding that middle ground where both parties feel heard and respected. Remember, it's your conversation too. You have the right to set the boundaries. And with that, we're ready to move on to the next strategy, focusing on facts and avoiding emotional traps. But that's a topic for our next scene. When talking to a narcissist, it's crucial to stay grounded in facts and logic. This approach is essential because it helps you avoid the emotional traps and manipulations that narcissists often use to control the conversation. In a discussion, it's easy to get caught up in a whirlwind of emotions, especially when dealing with a narcissist. They may use emotional arguments to throw you off balance or personal attacks to undermine your confidence. But remember, the key is to stick to objective facts and evidence. This anchors the conversation and prevents it from spiraling into a heated, unproductive argument. Now let's talk about expressing your feelings. It can be challenging, especially when you're trying to avoid blame or accusations. This is where I statements come into play. These are simple sentences that start with I, followed by how you feel, and then the behavior that is causing it. For example, you might say, I feel uncomfortable when you interrupt me. This way you're not pointing fingers or blaming the other person, but simply expressing your own feelings and experiences. Of course, expressing your feelings doesn't mean you have to validate inappropriate behavior. There's a significant difference between acknowledging someone's feelings and endorsing their inflated claims or manipulative tactics. For instance, if a narcissist is upset and making outlandish statements, you might say, I understand you're upset, but I can't agree with your statement. This acknowledges their emotions without validating their distorted view of reality. So what's the bottom line? It's all about keeping the conversation grounded in reality, expressing your feelings without blame, and acknowledging without validating. These strategies can help you maintain control of the conversation without falling into emotional traps. By focusing on facts, you can keep the conversation on an even keel. By doing so, you not only protect your emotional well-being, but also create a healthier and more balanced dynamic in your interactions with a narcissist. A narcissist can push your buttons, but you don't have to let them control your reactions. This statement rings true when you find yourself in conversation with a narcissist. They can be experts at provocation, often baiting you into emotional reactions that serve their need for control. However, you hold the power to refuse this bait. When faced with a jab or provocation, it's crucial to remember not to take it personally. This may sound easier said than done, but it's a skill that can be learned and honed with practice. Remind yourself of the narcissist's tendency for manipulation and understand that their comments are more reflective of them than of you. Another strategy that can help maintain emotional control is the use of humor. A well-placed, light-hearted joke can sometimes diffuse tension and redirect the conversation to a more neutral territory. But use this tool with caution. 
Humor that is at the expense of the narcissist, or that could be misconstrued as hurtful, can escalate the situation rather than diffuse it. Aim for a gentle humor that lightens the mood without causing harm. And importantly, know that you have the right to walk away from any conversation that becomes unproductive or emotionally draining. It's not about admitting defeat, but about recognizing the value of your time and emotional energy. You can excuse yourself politely and calmly, setting a clear boundary for future interactions. This does not mean you are weak or incapable. It means you are strong enough to prioritize your well-being. So remember, while a narcissist might try to push your buttons, you don't have to let them control your reactions. By not taking their provocations personally, using humor strategically, and being prepared to walk away, you can maintain your emotional control. Maintaining emotional control is key to not getting pulled into the narcissist's drama. And with these strategies, you're well on your way to mastering this crucial skill. In conversations with a narcissist, your well-being should always come first. This mantra serves as a beacon when the waters of dialogue get murky. When engaging with a narcissist, it's crucial to remember that your emotional health and peace of mind are paramount. In fact, they should top your list of priorities. It's not uncommon to feel drained or upset after these interactions. If you find yourself in this state, don't hesitate to take a break. It's essential to recognize when you need to step back and recharge. And here's an important bit. Self-care isn't just about bubble baths and soothing cups of tea. It's about acknowledging your feelings, giving yourself permission to rest, and making space for activities that bring you joy and peace. But what if the emotional toll becomes too heavy to carry alone? That's where seeking support comes in. Engaging with a narcissist can be a complex and challenging experience, and sometimes you may need a little help to navigate it. This is perfectly okay. Reach out to a therapist or counselor who can equip you with additional tools and strategies. They can provide you with insights and coping mechanisms that are tailored to your unique situation. Support can also come from less formal channels. Connecting with friends or family members who understand your situation can provide a comforting sense of solidarity. They can offer a listening ear, words of encouragement, or simply a distraction from the emotional turbulence. And most importantly, remember this. You are not alone. It's easy to feel isolated when dealing with a narcissist, but know that many people face similar experiences. It's essential to foster self-compassion during these times. Be gentle with yourself. Acknowledge the strength it takes to maintain boundaries and prioritize your well-being. Remember, you're not alone in this. Prioritize your well-being and seek support when needed. You have the right to healthy and respectful interactions, and you deserve to protect your emotional boundaries and well-being. So stand tall, reach out when you need to, and always remember to put your well-being first. Navigating conversations with a narcissist can be challenging, but with these strategies, you can maintain your emotional well-being and set clear boundaries. It's about setting clear boundaries before and during the conversation, focusing on facts and logic, and avoiding emotional arguments. Remember to listen actively, but don't feel obligated to validate inflated claims. Resist the temptation to engage in sarcasm and always speak with respect. Don't take their jabs personally and use humor strategically to diffuse tension. Be prepared to walk away when necessary and always prioritize your well-being. Seek support from therapists or counselors and remember that you're not alone. Many others are navigating similar situations. These 10 strategies are your guide to preserving your emotional health and maintaining boundaries while communicating with a narcissist. Remember, you have the right to healthy and respectful interactions. Prioritize your well-being and you can navigate these challenging conversations with confidence.